This is our Land Rover Discovery 4, nicknamed Huzz. You'll see why in a minute. And today we're going to look at the stowage of the spare wheel and tyre as fitted with our new Compromotive PD1881. It's a very nice 18 inch alloy wheel there with BF Goodrich all terrain tyres, R size 265 by 65 by R18 which is overall a slightly bigger package than standard. The comparison on the right here, we've got the old 19 inch rim as fitted to the Discovery 4 with its general grabber all-terrain tire, dimensions 255 by 55 by R19. So the new package on the left, wider and a greater diameter as well. Okay, so here we're looking at the winch which is used to raise and or lower the spare wheel and tyre package, which lives under the floor at the back end of the car. And the issue we have with this tyre and wheel setup is because it's slightly bigger than standard, it's a bit of a squeeze to get it in the available space. So let's look at how we do that. So here you can see the tyre and wheel hanging on the winch cable beneath the tyre receptacle under the boot of the car. And the top trick here to get it fit is to consider deflating your tyre. I've gone down to zero PSI, zero bar here, by removing the valve core in an effort to get it to fit comfortably. At standard road pressure in the spare tyre, it would not fit. The dimensions are just too large for the receptacle. So let's try now and see if we can get it to go in. The other thing to mention is that uh, the tyre needs to go in as square as possible to the cradle. As you lift it on the winch cable, it can either go in at that angle, or that angle, or even tilted left or right. None of which is going to work. It's got to go in pretty much square on to the receptacle to have any chance of fitting. The available space left and right of the spare cradle is not limiting with this tyre and wheel setup. But fore and aft, we are restricted by the tow hitch receiver to the rear, shown here, and one of the chassis cross members to the front. This is why, to get it to fit, it helps to remove the air from the tyre to reduce its overall dimensions within the space available in the spare cradle. So, if you're working alone, it's a question of winch the tyre up bit by bit and then go back underneath and recenter the tyre as it comes up into the cradle. Much easier to do with two people. And as you wind the tyre into the cradle you'll feel varying pressures on the handle and in fact as you get nearer the top it does actually go a little bit looser as the tyre seats into the well and then eventually you can feel it reaches the end stop trick is not to force it, otherwise you'll end up with a busted winch cable, or worse. So here we go then. The spare tyre and wheel seated into the spare cradle, touching the tow hitch receiver at the rear, but that's okay. And as a matter of interest, we have fitted our tow hitch into the receiver and it still goes in fine. We're also touching the cross member framework to the front, but again, okay. No excess pressure is needed to winch it up into the cradle as long as you deflate first and make sure to center the wheel as you winch it up. Because it's a slightly greater section width tire, 265 versus 255 millimeters, a bit more of the tire is visible protruding downwards from underneath the vehicle. But it's still not the lowest point in terms of ground clearance. Your departure angle when setting off uphill may be slightly reduced, but we're not sure as we haven't tried that yet. So there you go. This shows how you can still carry your slightly larger spare tyre and wheel in the standard spare cradle. Other options are of course available, such as carrying the spare on a bumper fitted mounting. Probably the best option, though not cheap. Some people even carry the spare up on the roof rack. But bear in mind, tyre and wheel together weigh 37 kilos or 82 pounds, which is not only a lot of weight to haul up and down from the rack, but it isn't going to help the vehicle's centre of gravity. And probably worth remembering, of course, if you are going to mount your spare this way, don't forget to take along your trusty compressor, because the first thing you'll need to do when fitting the spare is, of course, reinflate it. 
hope this video helps. Feel free to like and subscribe. And of course, all feedback is welcome. Thanks so much and happy off-roading.